Hello, my name is Alex Vollmer, and in this course, we're going to look at an exciting new programming language for Mac and iOS development called Swift. June of 2014 was like Christmas morning for Apple developers. At the Worldwide Developers Conference, Apple announced two new operating systems, as well as an amazing collection of new APIs and tools for building applications. And a lot of developers felt like it had been a real bonanza, and that frankly, we'd gotten more than we ever expected from Cupertino. Then, Apple blew everyone away when they announced a new programming language called Swift. Now, Swift is billed as an entirely new language built from the ground up. It takes the best features of several different languages and combines them into something brand new. The Swift language is meant to leave behind the accumulated legacy of C and Objective-C and to become the new modern language of choice on the Apple platform. But what about Objective-C? Apple has been the sole steward of this language for nearly two decades. Are we just supposed to throw our Objective-C code out and convert it all to Swift? Well, the short answer is no. Objective-C isn't leaving the Apple ecosystem anytime soon. There are a vast number of existing APIs written in Objective-C that may never get converted to Swift. But that's no problem, because Swift and Objective-C can easily interoperate with each other. You can even mix and match the two languages within a single project. And also, there's no requirement that apps have to be written in Swift. Well, at least there isn't one yet. Now, Apple created Swift with these goals in mind. First, they wanted it to be safe. Building safety into every part of the language should help prevent bugs before they ever get written. They wanted the language to be flexible. Swift adopts a lot of the power and flexibility of functional programming while still maintaining basically an object-oriented approach. Developers should be more productive in Swift. Expressive features like closures and type-safe enumerations combined with Swift's terser syntax should make coding go faster. Swift incorporates a lot of modern innovations from other programming languages like Java, c -sharp, Ruby, Python, Haskell, and a host of others. Now, just because it's new doesn't mean that Swift should lose any of the performance benefits that Objective-C APIs have accumulated over the years. It should also be an easy language to learn. And I think this last point is a really important one. For a lot of new developers coming to the Apple platform, Objective-C was just too off-putting. And by creating a language that includes familiar conventions from other popular languages, one of the big hopes is that Swift is going to be easier for new developers to learn. Now, this isn't going to be a comprehensive course on the Swift language. Frankly, it's such a big topic, it simply wouldn't fit into a single course. Instead, the goal is to give you enough of a taste of the language to answer these questions which are probably at the front of your mind. For example, what does this language even look like? What does the syntax look like? Can you read it and does it make sense to you when you look at Swift code? How does this language work? Meaning, what do the APIs look like? And what is it like to use Swift on a daily basis? How do you go about learning it? What are the key Swift resources and pieces of documentation that are going to help you master this language? And frankly, a really good question to ask is what are the shortcomings? What are the things that you're used to doing that might be harder to do in Swift? And of course, the most important question of all, is this language right for you and your team? And at the end of this course, you should have enough understanding of the language to answer these questions and to see if it's right for you to add Swift to your skill set and use it on future projects. So we'll start by looking at the defining features of Swift and how it relates to Objective-C.